Good morning. Um, my name is Jacqueline Diet. I'm the head of school for business, travel and tourism, accounting and professional services here at the College of Haringey and Field in North East London. Today I have with me Susan Cowell, who is the AAT assessor um, for the team, and we will be talking to you about careers in accounting um, with us. So I suppose that most of you are considering thinking about a career in accounting, and I first wanted to start to talk about what skills are, are needed in the next three years, for, for example. So I think most students would need to have a bit of data and digital skills and to be able to get their hands on with financial data and the digital tools that accountants use every day. AI and cyber skills, as I'm sure most of you are familiar with, it, because this is now in the forefront, um, being able to in the world of finance. And for you to be able to learn the basics of cybersecurity. Also quite important is understanding how environmental, social and governance um, on understands or impacts on the role in final financial decisions and just to see how accounting can contribute to having eco-friendly and socially responsible practices. You've also probably heard the term green finance and just being able to have um, some insights and being able to dive into sustainable finance and discover how accountants can contribute to a greener planet. Climate change awareness is quite useful. Um, and so to be able to explore the impact of that change on financial decision making and being able to learn how to plan financially while considering the climate. One important skill that needs um, to be developed would be your ability to work within cross sectorals and to be able to gain insights into various industries um, to understand accounting from different perspectives um, and how accounting can be applied across different sectors for us and for you to have a more versatile career. Now, there are soft skills that an accounting learner would need to also develop to enable them to have a long and fruitful career. Um, so analytic, analytical skills, being able to develop those um, are useful for making decisions um, based on data and to be able to tackle complex financial scenarios with confidence. Problem solving skills is very crucial um, for all the levels, particularly with levels three and four um, in the accounting qualifications that we run. Um, and so being able to cultivate critical thinking and problem solving um, is crucial for financial challenges. Also being able to be adaptable and resilient is, is very useful because it, it allows you to be flexible in the face of changing financial rules um, within the current climate. Um, I'm sure you all have experienced, as we all have done, the crisis over the past 10 years, especially with COVID-19 and the banking crisis. Um, and the world is very different now, so we need to be able to adopt and adopt very quickly. Um, effective communications is very useful. So being able to um, have clear financial conversations and to be able to strengthen your collaboration and interpersonal skills, to be able to seamlessly integrate into teams and having a lifelong um, learning mindset, being able to commit to your continuous learning for a successful accounting career and to always consider, as I'm sure you are, um, pursuing qualifications, certifications that will allow you to stand out in the accounting field. 
And uh, more importantly, because of the impact of the um, COVID-19 and the current um, economic crisis, being able to um, work in a hybrid way, being able to embrace new ways of working, um, to be able to work with new working models. A lot of people are now working um, with different hybrid approaches. They're working part-time in the office, uh, more at home, and there are a lot more conversations that are being had virtually. Um, so there always will be new ways of developing and or delivering projects. And so you need to be able to adapt to the speed of change. So at the college, we deliver the Association of Accounting Technicians qualifications. So we do all the levels from level one, two, three, and four. And we also deliver these in a flexible manner. So we have provisions where we have day release. So you can come into the college, you can then um, enroll on our courses, you can do part-time day, you can do evening. Um, we also have a weekend provision and we also have full-time versions of courses for the younger learners. So there is a possibility for you to be able to find a program that will suit with your lifestyle. Now, the AAT qualification is well recognized and respected and is widely acknowledged by employers. So it does provide a credible endorsement of your individual skills and knowledge. Um, it's, it's also practical and applicable learning because it focuses on job relevant skills. So there are lots of employment opportunities with this qualification. It offers a structured progression through the different levels. Um, and so once you come through to us and have that discussion, we will discuss with you the versatility in the career paths that you can possibly then embark on once you start with the accounting program. The qualifications are relevant across various sectors and industries and graduates from these programs can pursue roles in accountancy firms, corporate finance, public sector organizations, or self-employment, providing flexibility in career choices. It's a cost-effective education, um, levels one and two, and currently the level three program are free. Um, membership for the lower levels is provided so that you wouldn't need to, to worry about the cost implication. And the tuition and exams are included in the delivery. So this makes the qualification with us accessible to a broader range of individuals who may not necessarily have the resources for more expensive programs. The qualification allows you to get or gain exemptions in other professional accounting qualifications. For example, it can provide exemptions in papers for bodies like ACCA, SEMA, and ICAEW, which can therefore streamline a path for further advanced studies. As my colleague will later discuss with you, there are other pathways, such as apprenticeships, which you can also try to embark on. Now, as I've said before, the qualification is recognized by employers, um, and it signifies the practical competencies that you would have gained, and many job listings that you will see mention the AAT as a preferred or required qualification. There is an opportunity or opportunities for specialization depending on what you want to focus your career path, um, such as the AAT level four diploma allows you to focus on areas like tax, auditing and credit management and this will enable specialization based on career interests. 
the AAT membership that you will gain and have to acquire as part of the program provides access to professional network. It allows you to connect with peers, with mentors and other industry professionals. This can be beneficial um, for your career development and staying updated with industry trends. With the qualification, there is a pathway to higher education and the AAT qualification can serve as a stepping stone, as we've seen with many of our learners, to higher education. Um, and so therefore, it is not just a lower level qualification, but what we also find is most people will complete this and feel this is enough. And others will use this as a stepping stone to higher level qualifications, such as I've mentioned before, ACCA or SEMA. Some students will often um, combine the qualification um, with the ATT, which is the Association of Taxation Technicians, which focuses on taxation as part of the accounting. So it enables you to handle more complex tax matters. So here at the college, we have a lot of learners um, enrolling on the various programs, and there are a lot of job opportunities that are available once you complete these qualifications. For example, if you are at the entry level qualification, for example, AT level one bookkeeping, you will typically gain um, foundational knowledge in bookkeeping and basic accounting principles. While you will just focus on fundamental concepts, it provides the basis for further study and practical applications. So individuals completing this level may qualify for entry level roles in bookkeeping. You can possibly look at jobs in or being a bookkeeping assistant um, where you work alongside experienced bookkeepers to handle basic bookkeeping tasks. You can look at roles such as accounts clerk where you are responsible for various administrative tasks within a finance department. And this could be in any business. You can look at a finance administrator role, which can provide support in financial departments by handling administrative tasks related to financial processes. You can also be looking at roles such as payroll assistance, where you focus on processing payroll transactions. For someone who possibly has now completed the AAT Level 2 or would like to go into the AAT Level 2 certificate, um, completing a foundational qualification that focuses on fundamental accounting principles. This level, Level 2, provides a more broader understanding of accounting concepts and prepares individuals for entry-level roles in accounting and other related fields. So you might look at a role such as an accounts assistant, um, and this role plays a crucial role in supporting a finance department. And you may be involved in roles such as processing invoices, managing sales or purchases ledger, and assisting with basic financial transactions. With the knowledge you'll gain from a level two qualification, you can take on roles as bookkeepers responsible for making financial records, reconciling accounts, and handling day-to-day -day bookkeeping tasks. We currently have uh, level two apprenticeships, and we have, for example, one of my level two apprentices who is working with a charity which has an international arm um, of, of, of businesses. And they are able to, or this apprentice is able to communicate with her international counterparts 
and also be made aware of the projects that are carried on in various arms of the organization across the globe. So although she is based in the finance office, she is also able to communicate externally with clients that are in the UK and that may be at various other arms of the organization uh, outside of the UK or possibly, for example, in, in Africa where they also have one of the other branches of the organization. She's able to work on accounting software, which is useful for her development and for progression, and also to be able to have these skills on her CV as she decides to progress in her career in accounting. For level two, you can also look at being a credit control assistant you can look at being a finance administrator, or you can potentially, if you are aspiring to becoming management accountant, you can look at roles such as trainee management accountants or financial services administrator. There are a lot of opportunities for learners who are enrolled on the AAT qualification with us because it not only gives you the ability to work on financial aspects and support in accounting roles within the organization, but the skills you gain and the experience you gain will also enable you to have that stepping stone to progress onto higher levels of the accounting qualification giving you more advanced skills and qualifications that open doors to broader career opportunities in accounting and finance. Practical experience that you will gain on the apprenticeship and the continuous learning are key factors in advancing your career in the field. It's a different world, and so you would need to be able to adopt quickly. And with a life le lifelong learning mindset, what you potentially learn or have learned whilst you're in school may soon be out outdated. So you need to embark on a career which allows you to adapt and change there are so many new ways of working, but the skills you will gain will enable you to progress and to keep updating your, yourself and to be able to adapt quickly. The qualification enables you to um, progress to higher levels and to be able to get exemptions from some of the professional qualifications. Like I've said, it's a very versatile qualification. And so we would love for you to, at some point during this um, recording, to be able to ask the questions that you might feel are holding you back from making that decision uh, or that choice to go into or embark on an accounting and finance journey. We are here to help you to make those decisions and hopefully, as you've listened to us discussing the opportunities, um, we hope that it will make things clearer for you and that you will be able to make your decisions with a lot more um, information that enables you to make the right choices. We also have the level three and the level four qualification where students then work more with financial statements. They do a lot of tax work they look at internal controls and they also look at credit management and management accounting techniques. So there's a lot of opportunity for students to once they have completed the qualifications to then decide on what pathway they would like to then focus their efforts or potentially to um, Say, for example, you want to just work with tax or you want to be a management accountant or you want to just be working in a finance role. So please do ask the questions and hopefully if you want any further discussions with our team, 
we would like to invite you on site so we can have a more detailed discussion so we can then enable you to fine tune your decisions and for you to make the choice that suits your purposes in terms of a career path. I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague, Suzanne, who will talk a little bit more about apprenticeships and move forward with your questions. Okay, hello, I'm Suzanne Cowell and I'm an assessor at the college. Um, I've assessed in many different programs, but at present I'm dealing with accounting. And I want to talk to you about the benefits of moving into an accounting career. First of all, I'd like to talk to you about the opportunities this can lead to. Accounting, it may not sound exciting at first, but I can assure you that this can lead on to lots of different opportunities and varieties in work. I started in accounts and I've had a very varied career uh, because I got that foundation, that financial foundation. And that showed me where the money goes, where the money comes from, how to organise it and the benefits of knowing that that knowledge um, regarding a business. So that led me on to many different things in my career. I started as an apprentice, and I'm gonna tell you some of the benefits of being an apprentice, which you can do as part of your course. You can do that at level three, level four, and level two. You can come in um, and do it at level two, and we will help you try and find an apprenticeship placement. So the benefits, of an apprenticeship. First of all, you gain um, hands-on experience. So you're not only learning the academic side of it, but you're actually doing that, that role within a workplace. You get paid to learn. Well, that's really important, isn't it? To be earning while you're learning. Um, that kind of is versus other things that you could go into like university and things, but then you're really just learning the academic side of it and you're not getting that hands-on experience. So I think that's quite vital. You gain an industry recognized qualification and you get a feel for that work environment. You improve your employability because once you've got a little bit of experience behind you, you can add that to your CV and you can then be saying you've actually practically done some of these roles. Now, the types of roles that I've seen is when, when you start maybe on a level two or a level three apprenticeship, um, you start off probably in a junior position because you're learning. So for the first six months, I find with my students, they're learning the ropes, they're getting to know all the different things. And as an apprenticeship, you will be placed with a company or you find your own apprenticeship, we'll help you do that. And you, you're learning the basics. And as you progress, your employer is tasked to give you more and more. So you're continuously learning. And that, that will lead you into a position, which I can say um, most of my apprentices are in that position now, where they're then um, teaching others, they're getting added responsibilities, and they, they can then benefit that organization. So it, you're in a role where you're actually making a difference. And then you, you can look into going into the higher qualification of a level four. So some of the organizations, you might think, well, maybe it's just accounting companies um, that we're dealing with. That's not true. If you think of any business, that you deal with um, or you, you interact with, shops, um, offices, large organisations, sports centres, football clubs. Um, so all different sectors, they all have to have an accounting side, um, whether it's big or small. Uh, so when we look into place an apprentice or you're looking for your own placement, think about where you would like to work and, and what 
what sort of industry you'd like to work in. And then you can think, right, well, let's have a look at their financial side there and their accounting base. And would that be somewhere I'd, I could fit into and progress? So you might have to progress into um, uh, a different role within that company you might start in accounts but you might see something else while you're in that role and your accounting foundation can help you gain a further career base within a company or or outside that company so apprenticeships are very very important and they are the the thing that the government are pushing and that students are really looking to go for so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the level two to start off with apprenticeship. So in the level two, um, you would probably um, look at maybe a six month course, a four to six month course where you're a pre apprentice. And during that time, we will be looking to see if we can find placements for you. Um, once you have your placement, then and you've got your level two qualification, you would then go on to your level three, and that would involve uh, like doing the exams, which is the diploma part, and also a portfolio side. You do do a little bit of that in level two as well, partly a portfolio side. I'm involved with the portfolio work, which is just like doing coursework at school. When you're at school, maybe you do coursework. Well, this is like building a portfolio of evidence to show what you've achieved within your job role and that would be like knowledge skills and behaviors so we would be preparing you for that making sure that your way you're placed can help you achieve what you, you need in your evidence for your portfolio and um and with that, you would get your apprenticeship. So you would get your qualification side, which would be exam based, and that would be a day release to college. And then you would get your portfolio side, which would be evidence based. And um, you, you discuss that at the end of the coursework with AAT and explain what you've done on your apprenticeship. The same applies for level four, although by the time you get to level four on your apprenticeship, you would have been gaining more experience, more responsibilities, and even taking you into a leadership side. So that would be looking at that natural progression of you moving up within the company. When you're on an apprenticeship, you'd also need to make sure you've got uh, qualifications in English and maths. Um, so we would just make sure that you've got the relevant qualifications you need for English and maths. Um, that would be uh, the old grade A to C. And I think it is grades five to seven um, with the new newer uh, GCSEs. So we will make sure you've got some exemption. Uh, there is some opportunity to do key skills as well. So that would be something we will discuss with you when you came in for your enrolment. Um, so to, to carry on just talking about apprenticeships, as I say, in my experience, an apprenticeship can lead to lots of opportunities um, and you are earning that, that wage while you're learning. Um, and you also get the opportunity maybe to train others as the time goes on. And so you get a bit of leadership and mentoring within your, your, um, your course. So an, a, a successful apprentice I've worked with is one that had a, a placement at Tottenham Hotspur, the football club. And uh, that apprentice went through level two, first of all, as a, a pre-app, as we call them, a pre-apprentice. Um, they passed that, they got the placement at Tottenham Hotspur. They were in a fantastic environment, lots of um, opportunities there, lots of uh, uh, 
sort of benefits for working for an organization like that. And while we're talking about benefits, you also do get incentives for being an apprentice. There's travel discounts and, and other discounts that you can gain as part of an apprenticeship. Um, that, that learner then went on to do a level four and, and then they're successfully now progressing within that organization. The apprenticeship at level three, um, I'll just tell you that the, the duration for that, so you know, um, we we have it on as a, a two year apprenticeship, but you can actually achieve it within uh, 12 months and a day. So uh, it's just something we look at the pace and, and how you work, but you can achieve qualifications as early as uh, 366 days so there is that opportunity to finish them early as well um, the success, successful side of being an apprentice so what do you need to be so you need to be reliable you need to be punctual and make sure that you're attending college and your apprenticeship um, on time that is very important you need to be enthusiastic um, show motivation show willingness to learn and also to be able to take on challenges don't worry though because we are all here to help so we know that sometimes when you go in you might have a little bit of anxiety or you might worry about what's ahead but I'm here as your your assessor and the college team also are there to help you especially the tutors with your studying um, I'd also say the success of being a, a good apprentice is to be to have that um, drive you really do need to have drive and you need to look at the end goal and work towards that so you need to have good organizational skills make sure you're working to deadlines um, again this is something we can help with I can give you ideas of how to organize yourself how to make sure that you have all the tools available to you. And there's lots of tools. So it's not all about just making notes and reminding yourself. There's loads of things that you can use nowadays to help you stick to deadlines. And remember your employer is there to aid you and support you and to make sure that you're successful too, because it, it's important to them that you're successful. Um, maybe some advice that I would give to anybody trying to make that decision as to whether accounting is for them or whether an apprenticeship is for them, is, is just to say that in my experience, I've seen many apprentices, sometimes maybe a little unsure at the beginning, but with the help and the guidance that the employer gives you and we give you. I've seen people grow from being very nervous, very um, reluctant to face those challenges to then almost running the department. They, they become so confident in the end and so positive that I tell them to look back on where they started and where they are now. And they can't believe it themselves that how well that they've succeeded. And then they're also training other apprentices, which they would never have imagined they would do at the beginning. Um, employers, um, the feedback I would give to employers is uh, to nurture that talent that you're getting when you gain an apprentice. It's a two-way street. It's not only the employer um, teaching the apprentice, but in many cases, the apprentice teaches the employer um, because some of the um, skills that apprentices can bring, especially IT skills, I found, to some of the organisations they work for has, has been very beneficial. And I, I always do an end exit survey with my students and they, they tell me what added value as well as the employer also provides a witness statement and they'll say what added value that that apprentice has provided 
And it's quite delightful to read uh, because there are so many things that that the apprentices can bring to that that um, organization. Um, so apprenticeships, as I say, are a very good uh, opportunity and worth considering. So definitely look into that. Um, you can look it up on our website or you can ask us questions um, at any time. Um, if you want to come into the college, just make an appointment and we can see you in the college and we can talk about it further. Um, so just um, now talking about some of the workplaces that I've been and some of the experience I've had. So, uh, like I say, I've worked at football clubs, at uh, design outlets. Christian Dior is one that I've worked with. They have an account side. I've worked in retail, um, also some of the places, uh, even places like um, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. I've been an assessor there, and that's been with accounting side. Um, councils, local councils, charities, uh, so many different places, so many interesting places as well. I've also worked um, in the public sector with the Met Police, with um, the London Fire Brigade. So anywhere that, where there is an accounting side, we can look into seeing if there's any opportunities there, as, as can, can you when you're looking out for apprenticeships. Um, some of the roles that people do within the apprenticeship, as Jackie said, most of them start off in a, maybe as a junior role, assistant accountant, things like that. But then they, get, they tend to, as they get on, after, after about that six month period and then moving on, they get the opportunities to look into other departments within that, that financial side. Uh, some of them move towards management accounting. Some of them, um, you know, look at uh, the VAT and the bank re reconciliation side of it. Uh, some have become auditors, uh, so that they, they like that side of it. When you're when you're auditing accounts, you're checking uh, for any discrepancies or anything. It's kind of like being a detective. You're looking at all the different scenarios and what what this could be and how that figure has come to be and then you're delving into it a little bit more so I know a lot of my students that have gone into the auditing side have really enjoyed that but there's also um, client interaction so uh, when you're doing management accounts it might be for certain clients and it, you have to be trusted to to get into that role and dealing one-on-one -on -one with clients uh, but you know as I say once the the apprenticeship moves on a lot of the the students and apprentices move to that responsibility and have their own client base uh, they build up relationships which is why um, the communication skills and organizational skills are very important and, and as Jackie mentioned before and they end up building trusted relationships. Um, at first, their work is probably checked before it goes out to a client. But then as time goes on, again, if they've got a good track record, they can start dealing with that client directly and build that rapport and that relationship. So um, that, that's one type of career that you could go into. Um, there's accounts payable and accounts receivable or credit control and bought ledger as it used to be called in the olden days when I was doing it. And um, chasing for money, that's something that I used to be involved in a lot. And I found that um, it was hard, but it was also quite rewarding when you actually got a client that owed you maybe quite a bit of money to, to pay up. And so you, you have to have tenacity, you have to have positivity and confidence to be able to deal with situations that are sometimes challenging. Um, it's not all smooth and plain sailing. It can, it can be that you're having to, to deal with those challenging situations. But again, you will not 
just be thrown into the deep end. It will be a gradual training um, activity that you do with the employer and with, with the college, because we try to embed what you learn at college with the employer and vice versa. Um, with, the, um, with the employer, they, they do have quite a vital role with contributing to your portfolio. Their role is to um, provide, as I mentioned before, a witness statement. And in that witness statement, they're basically writing, it's like a reference. It's like when you're applying for a job and you get a reference. Um, they're writing all the things that were good about you and all the things that you've achieved. So building that reputation and that rapport with your employer is very important because you are going to need them at the end and that you want them to be writing a good report for you. So they do contribute and they also contribute with reviews um, so that we constantly get in an update on how you're doing and whether you um, are progressing at the right time and on track record and if you're not, again, we will intervene and we will try and help. So all the time you will have support and you will have um, that backup from your college and your employer. So um, please consider an apprenticeship um, when you're looking at accounting. So now we might move to questions. Um, so, yeah. so how how does one apply for any of the accounting programs that we currently run? Um, so there are open evenings every Monday that are held on site. Um, so you are free to apply to any of the programs that are currently running. And you can come on site and have an interview, discuss your options with the staff between 4 and 6 p.m. on a Monday. And they will then be able to, with you, discuss what course will suit you based on your level of skill and all your qualifications. We also would like to have everyone do an entry level test so we can just gauge what your starting point is and also to help the staff to make those decisions to ensure you are enrolled on the right program. When it comes to apprenticeships, as Susan has indicated, should you wish to go down that pathway, we will then have a more detailed conversation with you. We would look at your qualifications on entry. Obviously, you would need to have five GCSEs, including maths and English, for us to then be able to put you through if you are a, longer partic a younger participant and you would like to start with a level two pre-apprenticeship, um, for us to be able to put you into that fast paced program and for us to then be able to have you work with our employee engagement staff to secure you the right placement opportunity. Um, so there are lots of available opportunities. We have courses that start in January um, so that there are opportunities for you if you aren't currently enrolled in another program for you to then join one more courses. We also try to support learners with all the other additional skills that are required. As I mentioned initially, the soft skills that you require, the problem solving skills, the analytical skills, the ability to adapt. Um, we hope that you will develop those skills with us. So we try to also include other opportunities for you to develop those. For example, we have spreadsheet um, courses that we also run that will help you to develop the skills you would need for units in the level three qualification. As you know, accountants would need to be able to handle and or use Excel very well. We also try to develop your written skills and your analytical skills. So we try to help you along the way to develop those skills that are required for the world of work. And hopefully at the end of your journey with us to make you more employable um, and to have a longer career in accounting or finance. 
So if there are opportunities for you to come in to see us and or if you just go to our website, www.cornell.ac.uk and check out all the other courses that we have that are going to be running from January. Um, and should you wish to come in and speak to us directly, our staff is willing and able to discuss the opportunities with you. Is there anything that we should be discussing? Any other questions that are coming through? All I can say is that our current learners are enjoying their programs. Our level two apprentices that we have, or level two, three, and four, are progressing well. Um, the exams are challenging. There is no getting away from that. As you're aware, the AT qualification is all exam based. So you will have to be sitting and passing these exams. However, the opportunity for a career and uh, having a longevity in terms of a successful career path is there um, with someone who's committed, someone who's willing to work hard, someone who's adaptable, someone who is able to fit into organizations, someone who is very agile and resilient, um, you are able to then have on your CV upon completion of these qualifications, skills, knowledge and behaviors that can be translated into any organization. And do not feel that accounting is just with an accounting organization. It can be with any firm, any business. And if you aspire to be a CFO, for example, in the future, progressing and using this qualification as a launching pad could be your best starting point. So do come in and speak to our staff, discuss your options, and let us get you started on your journey with us. Any final words, Suzanne? Um, only, only that we will enjoy seeing you when you come in and we look forward to any questions that you may have please feel free to let us know and um, and think about an apprenticeship um, and don't think about not having a specific qualification may not gain you entry onto the programs we will assess your starting points and, and your ability to be placed on one of the levels that we have. Um, we obviously would like to see your qualifications, but like I've said, because we have all the different levels of the program, there are different starting points, and we will certainly be able to provide a route that works best with your need whether it be a level one, whether it's in the day or in the evening, or whether there's a weekend opportunity for you to start on an accounting program. We also have and are delivering Sage Cloud, which is an accounting software. And we are also looking to um, use Xero um, and to enable our learners to develop other accounting software skills under their belt so that when they go out there and are uh, developing their CVs, that they have a lot more skills that they have acquired that are asked and demanded for by employers in industry. Um, one of my current level two learners who is currently working is using QuickBooks as her accounting software. So she's gaining that skill while she's being taught um, the accounting units. So she's then able to see how her knowledge is being translated into what she does at work. And you can see how the apprentices, for example, as Susan has detailed to you, how they're able to transfer knowledge directly into the workplace and how that unison is then able to um, help them to adapt and progress quickly in their career path. It does give them that launching pad to develop their careers. We had two recent level four apprentices who are now embarked on their level seven journey. 
and they will then become charted in a few years time. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to progress depending on what your immediate needs are and whether you want to work quickly or you want to take this the long haul and you want to get your chartered status, there is a starting point and there are opportunities for you to join the college um, for on our courses from January and or from September 2024. And we would love to have you um, start your journey. Any queries, do see our team and come in and discuss your options with us.